this tutorial, we are going to create a color picker. Um, so I have dropped in your Google Drive folder a file called Color Picker Demo. And um, we've already got some items set up in our window. Um, so if you load this in the browser, this is what we currently have right now. So we have um, four labels, and then we have an integer field here, 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 and here. And then we have a text field here that's currently set to 0000000. 000 000. And if you remember from HTML, that is the color black. Okay, um, in order to get the color picker, it's called a color chooser in TK Enter. So we need to import some content from TK Enter. So let's go up to the top here. And from, oh, no, no, we're just going to import. TK enter color chooser. Now we're going to add a canvas with an initial black background. So we'll do self dot add canvas. We're giving it a row of zero column of two and saying that it's going to span over four rows. A width of 50 and the background is currently set to the hexadecimal color black. So when you run this code, you get this. So it created basically this black canvas, which will eventually display whatever color from the color picker is chosen. Now let's add a button. The button will have the text choose color. And when that button is selected, we are going to run a method called choose color. So we set command equal to self dot choose color. Now let's add the event handling method. Notice that it is aligned with our init method. We called it choose color and added a doc string. tkenter.colorchooser.askcolor is a function that returns a tuple of two elements. The first element in the tuple is a nested tuple, contain, nested tuple containing three RGB values. So it has the R value, the G value, and the B value, the red, the green, the blue. The second element is the hex string value of the color. And if the user clicked cancel when the color picker box appears, both elements in the tuple are none. Because the RGB values are returned in a floating point number, we have to convert those to integers. So here's what our code looks like. If not color tuple equals or color tuple at zero return, because it, if it would return a none if the user clicked cancel, then take the RGB value hex string and set that to color tuple. Then we need to set the R value, the G value, and the B value. We have to convert those to an integer. We're setting our text to our hex string and then changing the canvas background to be what our hex string is. So if we run this code, we have our color chooser. We click choose color, which executes this function. If I select cancel, that tuple that this method executed returned none, so it just returned our code. But if I do choose a color and click OK, then it takes that color, converts those float values into int values, and it prints here, 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 and here, and also changes that color to that background color that is here. Okay, so that's a color picker. This is our last um, widget that we're going to use in this chapter. But there are other um, window components like canvases that you can use for graphics, sliding scales, and scro scrolling list boxes. Remember also from our snake tutorial, we could code or bind um, our code to respond to certain key presses. Um, we could also bind our code to respond to certain mouse events. So if you want to read up on that, feel free to, to YouTube that. There, um, you can visit this textbook author, author's website to learn more about the Breezy Python GUI. Um, but I think you guys got a good understanding of it. 
Okay, well, that's it. We have done all the demos in this chapter. Congratulations.